Budget versus actuals is my favorite report. And for a ton of reasons, such as, well, it's beautiful. Here, I get to digest information with both numbers and pretty visuals. Next, it's so informative. Not only do I get to learn about what happened, but I could also learn about how that compares to what I thought was going to happen. Let me show you how I build one and how you can too. Before I do, go ahead and download this infographic right here and this Excel file. Okay, let's begin. Okay, so here I have my budget versus actuals table and let's just review how I have this set up. I have revenue, COGS, gross profit, and gross margin at the top. Then I have my operating expenses summarized by cost type, followed by net operating income, then net other income and net income to get my summarized profit and loss. Now I have two rows over here to summarize some cash flow items, first with our cash flows and then with our ending cash. I populated all the information in my budgets column and then my actuals column. Now let's talk about how we could populate the variance columns. If it's a good variance, I want it to show as positive. If it's a bad variance, I want it to show as negative. So watch what I'm gonna do. With regards to our good accounts, our income accounts like revenue, I'll take actual, I'll minus budget. Because in this case, we actually surpassed our budget. And because of that, I wanna show a positive. That's a good thing. So I'm gonna to go to all of my income accounts and I'm gonna go ahead and use that same formula where I'm gonna take actual minus budget. Now don't worry about the formatting. We'll go ahead and change that when we're done. And I'll do that for this over here. So as you can see, all of these over here are positive, which means all of our income accounts, we actually beat our budget, which is good. Now let's go to cost of goods sold. We're gonna do the opposite for our expense accounts. I'm gonna take the budget and I'm gonna subtract out the actual. Now what this means over here is that my actual cost of goods sold was higher than my budget. So because of that, I wanna show a negative. Negative is a bad variance. Just go ahead and copy that for all of these over here. Perfect, let me just copy that as such. Okay, now let me just take all the formatting here and copy it over. So I'm gonna press Control C, I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna open up the Paste Special dialog box. I'll hit Alt, H, V, and then R. This one over here on the bottom is what I want for actual formatting. I'll hit R, now we got all of our formats back to what we wanted. Okay, so let's understand what happened here. We surpassed our revenue by 400,000, that's good. We unfortunately had higher cost to goods sold, that's bad, but it's still a net good with our gross profit. And the same goes over here, our total op X. We had a few that we missed, but a few that we hit. Overall, it's a hit. Net operating income is 200,000 more. Cash is 94,000 more in terms of cash flows and 1.3 million more in ending cash. Great, now let's populate all the percentage accounts. Now, you may just be tempted to take the number and then just divide it by the budget amount, which would be fine, but look what happens if I actually do that over here. See, this was a good variance that we had. It was positive 94,000, but because the budget amount, which is in our numerator, because that was negative, it actually flips things. So instead, I like to always say, if error, now I'm gonna also wrap it around an if error in case there's a zero amount, but I'm going to say this divided by the absolute of this. And I forgot to say, if it's an error, then just give me zero. So I'm dividing by zero, I'll go ahead and just return zero. So now, I could replace that everywhere over here. As such. Okay, now let's just fix up the formatting here. So again, I'm gonna copy this. Alt H V R. And I'm just gonna hit Alt H P to go for percentage. All right, now let me also just uh, fix up these borders. Sweet, this is starting to come together, but we're missing my favorite part. These beautiful donut charts. Oh man, I could just stare at these all day. Okay, let's learn how to make them. So let's analyze how we're gonna build this. First, you'll notice that this is actually two components. So we have a donut chart right here. And then we have cells that refer over here to each cell. So let's start by just creating this part over here. So I'll come in here. I will select revenue. I'm going to select the variance amount and then I'll select the variance percentage. Okay, now let's do the same thing for net income. The net income variance and the net income percentage. And we'll do cash flows over here.
and then the variance and the percentage variance. And then lastly, we're gonna do ending cash with the ending cash variance amount and the ending cash variance percentage. Perfect, but this doesn't look exactly like we have it here. You'll notice that this says 8% miss, 84% miss, and this says savings. This just shows a percentage. So in order for us to change that, I am going to use custom formatting. So I'm gonna hold down control and select each of these cells. To open the custom formatting dialog box, you can either press control one or click on this number over here and then go to custom. Okay, so the way custom formatting works is this is what gets shown behind the semicolon if it's a positive value. This is what gets shown behind the semicolon if this is a negative value. And this is what gets shown behind the semicolon if this is a zero value. All right, so over here, I'm gonna say hit because that's what I wanna show if it's a positive value. Over here, I'm going to say miss because that's what I wanna show if it's a negative value. And this I'll just keep at no change. Okay, and there you go. Now you can see that my information populates accordingly. So this 8%, if I just change it to a positive 8%, you'll see it goes to hit. Okay, perfect. Now the only thing that we need to do is create these beautiful donut charts. So let's go over how exactly these donut charts are created and they are actually tied to a cool secret little table over here on the right. So why don't I just hide all these columns so we could show this information closer to the dashboard over here. So the way donut charts work is you always need to have two series. One series that's going to be shaded in, the other series that is not going to be shaded in, or rather your color B. So as you can see, we have a 8% variance. So I have one side as 8%, the other side is 92%. This over here is an 84% variance, so I have 84% shown here, and then 16%, one minus that amount, shown there. So that's how donut charts generally work, but what we're actually doing is we're gonna create two donut charts because we want our values to show one way with one color if it's positive and another way with another color if it's negative. So the idea is our positive values are not going to populate at all if this is a negative and vice versa. If this is a positive variance, our negative values are not gonna populate. So let me just show you what I mean. If I just enter in 8% over here, now you see that we actually have both of them shaded in. So this is like a hidden secret donut chart sitting on top of this that only gets populated if it's positive, allowing us to have one color for positive and one color for negative. Okay, so before we actually create this, let's talk about what formula we need to set up. So over here, I have the value. I'm just referencing each and every single variance that we have in our donut chart, no problem. Now, in this case, I wanna populate this value only if it's negative. And you can see that these three populate, whereas this one doesn't. So the way I'm doing that is I'm using an if function. If this value is less than zero, populate. Otherwise, just give me a blank. So that's what I did for all of these. And in this case, this actually is a blank. Now, in this case, all I'm doing is taking the inverse of the number that populates here, if this populates. So if my balance is less than zero, go ahead and populate one minus that amount. Otherwise, just give me blank. And that's what we do over here. So I do the same thing now with these positives, where this is populating because I'm saying, if it's greater than zero, give me the absolute version of this over here. Otherwise, just give me blank. And then again, this over here takes the inverse of that. All right, so let's start populating this on our end. So first I'm just gonna take these row headers as such. Now I'm gonna populate this for revenue, this for net income, this for cash flow, and then this for ending cash. Okay, so the value now is just going to equal the percentage value over here. And let's just do the same thing with this, as well as this, as well as this. Okay, now we need to populate. So again, these two values are going to populate based off whether it's negative or positive. These two values or these two columns are gonna then populate for the inverse of that amount so that we can accomplish one part shaded in and the other part not shaded in. Okay, so to do that, it's gonna be really simple. I'm just gonna set up my formula. If this value is less than zero, then give me the absolute of this value. Otherwise, give me blank as such. All right, now I'll just copy and paste that over here. 
And then let's take this formula and let's do the same thing for this column, only I'm gonna flip this. If the value is greater than zero, go ahead and populate, otherwise give me zero. Great. Okay, now let's take this formula again, let's copy it over and let's say if this value is negative, then give me one minus this amount. Otherwise, don't give me anything. Perfect. Now let's populate my B column over here. So again, I'm gonna say if this is greater than zero, then give me one minus this amount. Otherwise, give me nothing. And I'll copy that all the way down. Okay, so now my table matches to over here. Now we can actually start setting up our very first donut chart. So to do that, I am going to highlight all four of these cells. I'm gonna to go to insert, and then I'm going to select this over here for donut. Okay, now look at what it did. I have four series here. Only two of them are actually displaying. The other two are hidden. So again, if technically I wanna just enter in 8%, 12%, all that information will populate. Instead, it just shows as invisible. Okay, so our donut chart has populated. You can see this is 8% and then this is 92% over here, but it's pretty ugly. So let's clean it up. I'll start by deleting the chart title. I'll delete the legend over here. I'm gonna right click and go to format data series. Let's make this the highest that it can go, which is 90%. All right, already starting to look a little bit better. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna double click this part here and I'm gonna come here and now I wanna change the color. In order to change the color, I'm gonna use my color scheme over here. So let me just copy this here and let's paste that there. Okay, so the color that I want is this color as such. So I'll go over here, I'll select this color, I'll go to more colors and I'll just enter in the hex key over here E A E nine C E. Okay. All right. Now I want this gray for the non shaded in parts. So I'll just go ahead and click here. Ooh, I got to click a few times. Okay, here we go. Now I got it. So the color over here, I'm just going to go again to more colors and we're going to select this as F four, F four, F six. Okay, perfect. Now it looks like the information was populated. All right, so we have the first donut for these shaded in. Let's create a second donut for these. So what I'm gonna actually do is I'm just gonna delete this. And I'm gonna say eight and 92%. And you'll notice that Excel has different colors because again, we didn't create the colors yet for this side of our series. So I'm gonna make this our blue, which is gonna be this color right here. And we're gonna go to more fill colors and I am going to go to custom and enter in our blue background which is 384-34D. Let's go ahead and hit okay. All right, now for this, I'm again going to select the same gray that we had before. Awesome, okay. So now I'm just gonna undo and get my formulas back in here, what I just overrode. And there you go. You see that the information populates. So. Let's go ahead and remove now the fill from the actual chart. Then let's remove the outline as well. And let's layer this on to our revenue. Let's just hold down shift and make it smaller, a little bit too small. All right, I think that is just right. So let's go ahead and test this out. If this number over here changes to 8% positive. So there you go, the information is updating. If I do 25%, that is positive as well. And if I do negative, it goes to yellow. Okay, so now I'm just gonna copy and paste this same donut that we created to all four of these other ones. Okay. And now I have all my information complete and our budget for actuals is good to go. Voila, you got yourself a budget for actuals dashboard. You can now take a screenshot of this and put it in a PowerPoint or a Google Slides presentation and show everyone just how cool you are. Way to go. This is just one of dozens of dashboards that I love using. I also love using KPI dashboards, break even dashboards. I'm just a dashboard nerd. How about you though? Have you ever used Buzzard vs. Actuals? Let me know in the comments below. And see you next time.